Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Duluth, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida, Tempe, Arizona, and Burbank, California. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. We have special guests with us. It's uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, activist, the best selling author of 12 books, including his latest, The Greatest Evil is War. It's Chris Hedges. He's previously hosted the Emmy nominated show on Contact for RT America and RT International. His writings and his podcast, the Chris Hedges Report podcast, can now be found on his Substack at chrishedges.substack.com. Please welcome back to the show the one and only Chris Hedges. Thanks, Jimmy. It's uh, good to see you again. Um, <laughs> I heard you just got uh, in trouble. Uh, well, we reversed it. Yeah, they took down one of my comments on Kamala Harris. Although everything I said was factually true, this was TikTok. So oh, yeah, you know what? I think I Insane. have that. Let me let me try to find it. I think I have it, and so we can play it, and then we could talk about it. I'm pretty sure I have it. Is it? No. Is that it? Is that it? Yes. Here it is. Oh, you could come to me. Okay. Let's watch. So here is your uh, Kamala's policy record is abysmal. Mainstream media is meant to divert your attention away from her record. A major reason why so many are failing, falling for her vapid campaign. So let's watch this. This is what got taken down. Why are so many progressives and leftists going for Kamala? You know, a fear of Trump because they're swayed by the bombardment of propaganda. A lot of it's woke politics because she's a woman of color. Although, you know, we should have gotten over that with Obama, who, as Cornell West said, was just a black mascot for Wall Street. She was a cop, basically, and served the interests of law enforcement when she was attorney general in California. When Obama ran, Dennis Kucinich printed out and gave me a copy of Obama's voting record. He said, you got to read this because it's every corporate giveaway that's possible he supported and Dennis said that when he went to go to baseball games in Cleveland the ushers would go up and down and he would say get the scorecard get the scorecard he said that's the scorecard this is the scorecard this is all that matters all the hundreds of millions of dollars they invest in propaganda is essentially an effort to divert you from looking at the scorecard and her scorecard's a business that's of course why she's been anointed and there you go and there is it is there anything factually untrue in there uh, I can't say anything factually untrue. It seems all it seems true, but that again, Chris, you know that you don't get in trouble for lying. You get in trouble for telling the yeah, truth. Of course. Uh, They're not afraid of lies. They're afraid of the truth. They don't. They didn't put Julian Assange in prison because he was lying about the government. They right. put, they put him in prison because he was telling the truth. Right. So, what do you mean? Li lying is very good for your career. I should know. I used to work at the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Let me just let me just say that I don't ha have any uh, any idea how to do those TikTok things. That's all done by Max Jones, so we should give him credit for that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't know the technical side of it, you mean? Oh my gosh, no. I can I can you know barely handle email. Yeah. Uh. Well. Uh. As long as we're uh, we're talking about Kamala Harris and the and the media running cover for her, because that's what that is. Right. That's yeah. the, that's the social media. And that's happened to us. That's happened to us on Facebook. That's happened to us. Facebook and and TikTok and Instagram are the worst. They're the most censorious. Uh, Twitter, you get a little more freedom and YouTube uh, a little less than TikTok. Um, but Rumble and and I would say Twitter are the best or X, they call it now. But uh, I refuse to call it X, as Kurt Metzger says. I'm even referring to Malcolm X as Malcolm Twitter in defiance of the name change. So um uh, what do you make of that? So what do you make of, of, of Silicon Valley protecting her so much? Well, Taibbi exposed all of it in the Twitter files and, and he got the documents. We know that they are an extension of the national security state. They hire from Homeland Security, FBI, NSA. They're all the same people. Uh, it's, it, they're, they're essentially fused or bonded with the national security state. Uh, the worst aspects of... Uh, the censorship is driven by the Democratic Party, um, and uh, and and uh, you know they they really crucified Matt for reporting that, as you know, and as you report. Yes, uh, but that's just uh, undeniable, and so it's a very tight race. Um, uh, she's completely vapid. There's nothing there. Um, so 
I think as that is becomes exposed, um, her her policy positions are completely opaque. Shouldn't have any. That's the Obama strategy. Uh, and as it becomes closer to closer, they the the censorship will become more and more draconian for those of us who call her out, without question. Uh, we we are not allowed to call her a sociopath. I found that out. We're not allowed to use the C word, uh, even in a comedic way, when we refer to her. I found that out. Uh, I'm talking, this is uh, at least on YouTube, it's way worse on. They, uh, you know, I did a video one time and I, it showed people confronting um, uh, Justin Trudeau. So he was out, he went to a, make a campaign appearance somewhere, and everybody there hated him, turned out. I, I guess he did, didn't, his team didn't do any good work to figure out who was going to be there, but they all hated him and they all were protesting him. And it was uh, right after the trucker protest a, in, in Canada. Eh? And um, so we showed that, and they took that video down at us, and they said it was targeted harassment. That's what we got labeled with, targeted harassment. I'm like, he's the he's the. What, what, is he the president? He's the what? What do they call him? The prime minister of the country, right? Isn't that what he is? Yeah. Well, but everything's inverted. So when they took down that TikTok little TikTok post that you showed, it said because she was, I forget the exact terminology, a protected minority or something like this. She's the vice president of the United States. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's like it, this might as well be Stalinist Russia or something. It's Stalin, it's Stalinism. I mean, it's insane. Uh, she's a powerless figure. Uh, I mean, I know you called out Oprah, which was great. It's, uh, yeah, it, 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 you know, you don't even know where to begin. I mean, uh, if you cannot uh, look, there is nothing in there that wasn't factually correct. And, and when you can't even say that about now, one of the most pow what a, powerful political figures in the country, she's what a, she, you know, every time I pick up the newspaper, She's got another four hundred million dollars in donations. I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know, it, she's, you know, but it's this with this descent. I mean, we're just this death spiral of the entire country. Which, for those of us who say the most tepid things, and I, look, I mean, I'm not calling for mobs to burn down G Goldman Sachs. Not not that I would do much to put out the flames, but I mean, it's it's not. By, uh, on the on the bandwidth of incendiary rhetoric or revolutionary rhetoric, it's it's really moderate. I mean, it's it's uh, so, and you you can't even say this. Yeah, uh, we live in a well, we live in a, 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 a strange time. The the thing that is the scariest to me is that half the country cheers this kind of censorship on. Did you ever see that coming? How did the left become okay with censorship? I is I think it's just because of Trump derangement. Am I wrong? Yeah, it's Trump derangement. You know, it's there is there's always this phenomenon. You know, I covered as a foreign correspondent disintegrating societies where a certain segment of the society cheerleads their own enslavement in essence. Uh, and and that's what we're seeing because by setting up these systems, now this this has been going on for a long time. Uh, but by setting up, for instance, systems of mass surveillance, I mean, just everything that Snowden courageously revealed, uh, they've done nothing, uh, Democrats or Republicans, to uh, moderate the complete intrusion into our lives. We're the most photographed, monitored, recorded, spied upon uh, population in human history. And I covered the Stasi state in East Germany. So, uh, yeah, the, the, you wonder why. Um, yeah, I think it's a fear of Trump. Uh, I think it's because what defines liberalism is so completely bankrupt. I mean, the war party and is the, or the most fervent war party is the Democratic Party. Uh, you have, uh, you know, this Essentially, under under Clinton, you you have transformed the Democratic Party into the Republican Party, and the Republican Party has been pushed so far to the right; it's become insane. Um, but there 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 is traditional liberalism, or what we define as liberalism, doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so yeah, I mean, due process. I mean, as you know, I sued Obama over Section ten twenty one of the National Defense Authorization yes. Act. 
which overturned the, this was Obama who overturned the Posse Comitatus Act, which in essence allows the government to deploy military forces uh, for for domestic control and hold people in detention without uh, for indefinitely. And I mean, the 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 language of Section Ten Twenty One is until the end of hostilities, whenever that is, and that's that's law. So. All of these mechanisms have been put in place, often by Democrats. Um, Patriot Act, Biden was one of the authors of the Patriot Act. Uh, so, yeah, it's this steady and, – and as we march towards this kind of corporate totalitarianism, you've had to redefine liberalism so that it's just become woke politics. Uh, it doesn't – you know, the content doesn't matter anymore. I mean, Harris's content doesn't matter uh, cont- content is irrelevant. Well, I just wish that you had standing when you opposed. <laughs> Too bad you didn't have standing. Well, I won. You know, I actually won in the Southern District Court in New York, and that created a problem for the appellate. And so, yeah, what they the way they do it is they deny you standing, which means you don't have a right to bring the case. And it's a fun. They waited months and months to do it, and I was part of Clapper versus Amnesty International, where a bunch of journalists sued the NSA for wholesale surveillance. This was before Snowden, and the, and the lawyer, federal lawyers in Supreme Court said none of these journalists are being surveilled, which we know is a lie, but uh, now we know it's a lie. Uh, and if they were, the government would tell them. And the Supreme Court said, oh, well, OK, as long as you tell, well, them, you tell them, then they threw the case out. And so then the appellate court in New York said, well, Hedges doesn't have standing in Clapper versus Amnesty International. So he doesn't have standing in it was called Hedges versus Obama, which I love. I, that, I don't frame a lot, but I have that one on my wall. Um, yeah, but it all turned out to be a lie. It was a complete lie. Well, uh, the way I talk about it on stage is that they repealed habeas corpus barack obama repealed habeas corpus yeah. and so habeas corpus is in uh, the magna carta so he basically repealed the magna carta and now we're operating on a liberty view from somewhere around the 1100s and no one seems to notice <laughs> yeah because it's because of the prop the propaganda is so intense i mean it's so effective and this is what what makes antonio gramsci the great sort of Italian radical theorist so important is he understands that that cultural hegemony is a very effective form of control. And, and you, I, you know, Glenn Greenwald, you know, there are a few of us who try and break through that cultural hegemony, but we've been completely sidelined, pushed to the margins. Uh, and, and it is really effective. Unfortunately, most people speak in the slogans and cliches in which they're fed. Uh, and uh, and the the media industry has just become a giant uh, megaphone for the cliches and slogans that buttress the 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 billionaire class and the military industrial complex and the deep state. It's amazing to me how many people who I consider, you know, smart. They're college educated. They're adults. They own homes. They have jobs. Uh, believe or don't realize what you just said. They don't realize what Chomsky told us 25 years ago or 35 years ago, uh, was, which was that the news media isn't there to give us the news. The news media is there to manufacture consent. And who are they manufacturing yeah, well, consent for? They're manufacturing consent for a handful of billionaires who actually run things. Yeah, well, I used to work in it. I understand yes. it very well. And I know how it works. <laughs> Uh, you know, so if, for instance, I was overseas, so if I was, for instance, I covered the war in El Salvador. So if I'm writing off the ground stuff that contradicts official policy, I'm not only at war with, in this case, the Reagan administration, I'm at war with my own Washington bureau because the vast majority of journalists at a, at a news organization like the New York Times, they, their entire journalism is like doing lunch having access and the times hates it when you cut off access. So uh, I could write what was factually correct, but it got buried under a deluge of uh, lies that were fed to reporters in the Washington Bureau or after 9-11, I was based in Paris, but I was covering, I covered Al Qaeda in Europe and the Middle East. Uh, but I would go back to the New York Times and Fr- the French intelligence, which gave me everything because they desperately did not want a war with Iraq. I would go back to New York 
and they would and so I had a really good information but the the rest of the New York Times investigative team including Judith Miller they all uh, uh just dismissed it because if you remember at the time there was this anti-french kind of french racism they just threw it out so you know the 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 problem is that that not only do they disseminate the lies but they're true believers and you don't advance within those organizations unless you are a true believer. I mean, the New York Times spent two years giving us Russiagate, uh, which there was no there there. There was nothing there. It was a complete fabrication. And it was a way for the Democratic Party not to accept the responsibility for the alienation of millions. I mean, I think it's 30 million Americans have in uh, since 1996 have lost jobs and mass layoffs. They, they've never accepted respond. They didn't, they don't accept responsibility for it now. They invent uh, you know, it's Julian Assange, the Podesta emails, or it's uh, Putin. I mean, look, I mean, we haven't talked about the Israel lobby. Yeah, we have a foreign government that uh, manipulates our political system, and it's not China and it's not Russia. Uh, it's Israel. Uh, I mean, they own the Congress. You saw the Congress couldn't leap from their seats fast enough to cheerlead Bibi Netanyahu, who's, who's arguably a war criminal. Uh, so – yeah, it's 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 very sad. I mean, I my career has been that trajectory where there was space. I used to be part of the mainstream media. Glenn Greenwald used to be part of Matt Taibbi. We're all it's all we're all gone. We're finished. You either bend to the system and work for the system, or they push you out. They used to they used to bring me on late night television. They used to bring yeah. me on ABC, NBC, CBS. I had two specials on Comedy Central. That's all over. That's all yeah, over. It's over. So I want it's, to... it's over. It's it's over because they're in such trouble. They don't have any credibility anymore, and so they don't have any answer. There's there's no way they can respond to you or respond to me or respond to Glenn. They can't, and so therefore they have to they have to shut us up. They have to or, or at least marginalize us to such an extent that our voices are not heard. Um, and 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 nobody trusts them. I mean, one of the things about these algorithms that shut down uh, independent media is that they, the idea is to route people back to the traditional media that nobody wants. I mean, the Washington Post is in free fall. Yeah. Uh, well, we reported the story that where their uh, uh, editor was to address their newsroom saying, nobody's reading us anymore. Well, uh, that's right. When, when, when the, but, <laughs> right. So what's the solution? The solution is to like, uh, you know, uh, silence the critics, yes. not not actually do journalism. Um, no, it's just it's appalling. It's heartbreaking having been a journalist as long as I have. Um, yeah, nobody is reading them anymore, nor should they. Uh, I mean, the New York Times co- coverage of the encampments and the coverage of Israel has just been appalling. Yes, it's been I, I don't even I I. I, I I thought you when know, Jeff Bezos bought the Washington Post, it was because he was committed to the truth. I didn't think. Really? <laughs> no, of course not. The, when the when one of the richest guys in the world buys a newspaper, it's not because he cares about the truth. It's because he wants to control the news, just like Bill Gates has donated $300 million to news organizations, and we know what that's for. That's so he could get positive press. The same thing for Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos has uh, contracts uh, through Amazon with the CIA. He's not there to tell you the truth about the CIA or foreign wars. And when I was in Norway, we were on tour in Europe in the spring. Uh, people, t- I found out that people are just as upset about uh, Jeff Bezos buying the media over there. I didn't know he was doing that. Oh, so, I didn't know that either. Yeah, so it's not just here. So the richest guys in the world aren't just monopolizing the news in the United States. It's happening in Europe also, and people are onto it. Hey, come see us on tour. We're going to be in Duluth, Georgia, outside of Atlanta, Jacksonville, Florida. Florida, Tempe, Arizona, and Burbank, California. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. Mm-hmm.